We enjoy camping off-grid. Sometimes that means boondocking in a remote scenic place. Sometimes it can simply be an organized campground without a connection to shore power. Often, it's just a one-night stand pulling over to sleep for the night to break up a long drive. Whatever the case may be, it's nice to have the luxury of our favorite electric devices at the ready. For some, that may mean running a CPAP machine during the night, or it may mean just making coffee or watching a bit of television. And to make that possible, we've chosen to add a humble and inexpensive solar charging system and an inverter to our RV. I'm going to show you how we designed our system. You'll see what components I chose, how they work together, and how we use them while we're off the grid. It's important to start with the basics of RV electrical wiring before we get diving right in. A typical RV has two electrical systems. The 120 volt AC system which supplies power to the outlets, TV, microwave and such. And the 12 volt system which powers the slides, jacks, lighting, water pump, etc. When connected to shore power, the RV's converter can supply power to both of those systems all day long. Every electrical component can operate. When not connected to shore power, the RV's battery is the only source of energy, and it operates at 12 volts DC. So none of our 120 volt devices can be turned on. The only things working will be lights, water pump, furnace, but not the TV or the microwave, and of course not the air conditioner. This is where an inverter comes into the picture. An inverter is not usually installed on an RV at time of purchase. It is similar to the converter which does come with most RVs. A converter takes the 120 volt shore power, converts it to 12 volts, whereas the inverter can take the battery's 12 volt supply, and output 120 volts. We chose a rather small inverter, this 1000 watt unit from Renogy, because our electrical needs are quite simple. Of course, if we're camping off grid, we're using the battery to power all of our things, and so its charge will eventually run out, and it needs to be recharged. I used three energy sources to get that battery's charge replenished. First, the trailer's converter. When we're at a site with shore power connection, the converter will just charge the battery. Second, the tow vehicle's charging system does a great job while we're traveling between campsites. And third, we have a 100 watt solar panel, and that can collect enough energy from the sun to keep us going if we choose to stay out on site for a number of days. We live full time in our RV, so I didn't want to have a large block of time when the system would be out of commission during my installing of the new components. I broke down the project into a number of tasks that could be each accomplished in less than a single day of work. First, I moved the battery into the pass-through storage compartment. Second, I'll install a DC to DC isolator charger. Third, we install the inverter. And fourth, we add a solar charge controller and panel. Our RV came with the battery mounted outside on the frame's tongue. Now there are two good reasons to get it moved into the trailer. First, I upgraded to a lithium iron phosphate battery and want to keep it out of the weather and far from the sticky fingers of any would be battery thieves. So please note here, lead acid batteries must be ventilated. They must never be installed inside the RV. Our battery is lithium. It doesn't off gas, so it's just fine in the pass-through. Second reason that I brought the battery in from the tongue into the pass-through, it's important to keep the cables between the battery and the inverter nice and short. So the battery belongs as close to the inverter's location as possible. A longer cable just means more power loss, which means a larger diameter cable is needed, and that would increase the cost. At this point, I'm also installing a shunt and a battery monitor to keep track of the battery's state of charge. This is optional, of course. My next step is to install a smart isolated DC-DC charging unit. I chose this unit from Victron. I did a separate video explaining the function of this device. Basically, it allows my tow vehicle charging system to charge my RV's battery during travel days while we're driving down the highway. Third day, finally I get to my third step in this project, installing the inverter. It's certainly the most exciting part of the job because an inverter opens up a whole world of off-grid 120 volt power. I start with a short test of the inverter before actually installing it. This inverter not only outputs 120 volt power, but it also provides a USB port for powering our small electronic devices too. After making a couple of brackets from aluminum flat bar, the inverter mounts nicely to the ceiling of the RV storage unit, right above the battery. Fourth step, now to add solar. Before installing the charge controller onto the RV, we're connecting it and the battery and the solar panel here on the deck in order to test that they're working properly. The charge controller must be connected to the battery first and then to the solar panel second. Damage to the charge controller can occur if the panel is connected before a battery is present. As soon as the battery is connected, the charge controller comes to life. Now it's time to configure the controller 
I'm setting it to run with a lithium battery on a 12 volt system. Finally, I pull the panel out of the box, feeling like a kid at Christmas. The panel comes with the MC4 connectors in place. I chose to use an SAE connection on the trailer, so this adapter was required. As expected, the charge controller recognizes that a panel is connected and begins to charge the battery. Lay out the controller and circuit breakers on my wooden panel and bring the assembly to the RV. I'm keeping the solar system rather small at this point. The panel will remain portable. I'm choosing not to mount it to my RV's roof. Only a single panel will be used. We don't use a whole lot of electricity, so this will be enough charge as long as we don't get a number of cloudy days in a row. The panel comes with the usual MC4 waterproof connections. They're already in place. I picked up a set of extension cables, which allow me to move the panel as needed and follow the sun. And an MC4 to SAE converter cable set allows me to plug into the RV down here where the connection is protected from the weather. So how did I put it all together? Well, let me start at the beginning. I will overly simplify the system here. Most RVs are basically built with a power converter and a battery. These are the two components that power everything. When connected to shore power, the converter keeps the battery charged and every device gets the power that it needs. The next phase in this upgrade was to install Victron's smart isolated DC to DC charger. I've done a complete video just on this unit recently, so I don't want to get into too much detail here. Let's just say that the isolator protects the truck's charging system from the trailer's lithium battery, and it protects the trailer's lithium battery while the truck's starter motor is running. Step three was to install the 1000 watt Renogy inverter. As mentioned earlier, an inverter connects to the trailer's battery and it outputs 120 volt AC power. As of this point, the 120 volt power wasn't being used in the trailer yet. Stick with me another minute and that'll happen shortly. Another note that I want to mention here, I'm not showing fuses in the simplified wiring diagrams. Keep in mind that each circuit requires a properly selected fuse to protect wires and valuable electronic components. The final major component to install is the solar charge controller and a port that will allow me to conveniently connect and disconnect my solar panel at each campsite. I chose to install Renogy's 20 amp MPPT controller. It can handle more of a solar charge than my single 100 watt panel is going to produce, but I sized this with the intention of adding another panel in the future. When I want to connect the solar panel to the trailer, I mount it underneath here, sheltered from the weather, an SAE port which I can easily just connect to. So how do I handle the switching between having a shore power connection when at a service campsite and being off grid using the battery and inverter for my power needs? Many RVers install an automatic switching device which senses whether shore power is connected or not and then that switch responds accordingly. This is a really slick device. It makes life easy and I may choose in the future to budget for an automatic transfer switch. For now, I'm keeping my costs down and I manually switch between shore power and boondocking modes. When shore power is available, I simply turn the inverter off and I let my converter take care of all power needs. It operates just as it did on the day that I purchased the RV. When I'm off grid, I make two changes and run off the battery. First, I turn on the inverter. Next, I disconnect the converter's 12 volt output near the battery. This way the converter isn't going to be continuously charging the battery while it's being powered by the battery. That would create a weird loop with the battery trying to charge itself with its own power output and I believe that black holes or witchcraft would result from that, I'm not completely sure. Now I simply plug in my RV's normal power supply cord into the inverter's output port. I realize that not everyone would be willing to manually activate the switches and run their power supply cord as I do. But one of my goals on this project was to keep it affordable and I feel like I've accomplished that. Here you can see how much money we spent doing this install. This includes all components except the battery. I chose to leave that out because there are so many options for batteries. So that puts our total cost for this project at about $847 Canadian. I think that's an affordable budget that I could justify and I feel pretty good about that. So we're now able to use our smaller appliances while boondocking. Things like the TV or a CPAP machine, for example. If we're off-grid for quite a number of days, 
we're at the mercy of the weather when trying to use the solar panel, of course. With just this single solar panel, the rate of charge that we'll get is about an amp on a cloudy day, and in full sun, we can charge at a rate of about 8 amps. At that rate, for 8 hours each day, I can get enough charge to the battery to keep up with our demand if we make a conscious effort to minimize our electrical usage. We're likely to add another panel at some point in the future, and even a second battery, perhaps. We'll give it a little more time before making that decision. Check out some of our other videos, and subscribe to our channel. New content will be posted weekly.